Good morning. Hello to my sisters and my brothers in Christ. Today is going to be an interesting, blessed day. Um, Just a little, I don't know, a little bit of some of everything, I guess. But uh, mainly, we're speaking on wisdom and knowledge. Um, everybody know, though, well, if you don't know, my name is Taisha. I'm founder of Something for the People Ministry here on YouTube. Um, share, share, share. Um, like, comment, whatever you need to do. But um, I want to get the truth out uh, more. I know a lot of people are speaking the truth. You got false prophets, you got fake prophets. But those of you who are led by the Holy Spirit, um, you know, you know, so we need to get, let's get the truth out and let's get everything out in the open. Before we get started with my Bible verse, the message for today, let's pray because y'all know we have to bless these recordings, bless these videos. Father God in heaven, Lord, I come to you in the name of Jesus. Lord, no weapon formed against thee shall prosper. Lord, I trust you. I believe in you. I know that you are the way. All things are working together for the good. Father God, we need you. We thank you, Lord. We praise you. We worship you, Lord. Stay ahead of our lives, Father God. Help me get many of my sisters and brothers home as possible, Lord, because heaven is real and hell is real. Amen. Y'all, I've been um dealing with the heaven or hell thing a lot. You know, just um, is, is hell real or is heaven real? And I know that heaven is real. I know that hell is real. Uh, I don't have to have a vision and i would like to see heaven but i'm not interested at all in hell um i do not need to see that to be scared straight you know god know how i made and that uh, uh, uh i believe my belief is is great so you can tell me your hell story and i'm gonna take it for what it's worth and fly with it take it to the bank but uh let's get started like I said, the words today are wisdom and knowledge. And he gave me, uh, I'm going to let y'all know how sometimes these work. <laughs> these are all the Bible scriptures from my Bible that he gave me. And I had like little stars about the ones that I felt like, you know, were very important. But I'm not going to wear y'all out with them. So I'm going to skip around. But we're going to tie into mainly what he's talking about. I just want you to get the idea, the concept of where we're going with today's message. Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 6. Obey them completely and you will display your wisdom and intelligence among the surrounding nations. When they hear all these decrees, they will exclaim, how wise and prudent are the people of this great nation. Job chapter 5 verse 13. He traps the wise in their own cleverness, so their cunning schemes are throttled. And I Looked up that throttle meant prevent someone from accomplishing, prevent someone from accomplishing, accomplishing something. So throttle means to prevent someone from accompli accomplishing something. So he traps the wise in their own cleverness. So their cunning schemes are prevented pretty much. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. Psalms 20, Psalms 2, because I'm trying to, let me slow down and relax. You know, I just try not to make it so long, but Psalms chapter 2, verse 10. Now then, you kings, act wisely. Be warned, you rulers of the earth. So we got to act wisely. Got to be, you know, we got to calm down, do what we know is right. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 17. She will guide you down delightful paths as all her ways are satisfying. Jeremiah chapter 4 verse 22. My people are foolish and do not know me, says the Lord. They are stupid children who have no understanding. They are clever enough at all wrongdoing, but they have no idea of how to do right. Okay. Uh, Matthew 10, verse 16. Look, I am sending you out as sheep among wolves. So be as shrewd as snakes and harmless as doves. Shrewd mean having or showing sharp power or of judgment. So shrewd means having or showing sharp powers of judgment. So that means be able to make wise decisions, have a discernment, be able to know good and evil. Romans. Claiming to be wise, they instead become utter fools. So they want if you want to know everything, but really don't know nothing. 
Uh, okay, First Corinthians, stop deceiving yourself. If you think you are wise by the world's standards, you need to become a fool to be truly wise. So if you think you are wise by what the world was around you, you're going to have to be foolish to really become wise. Because that's, that we are, we are in this world, but we are not of this world. Second Timothy chapter 3, verse 15. You have been taught the Holy Scriptures from childhood, and they have given you the wisdom to receive the salvation that comes by trusting in Christ Jesus. Isaiah 28, verse 9. Who does the Lord think we are? They ask. Why does he speak to us like this? Are we little children just recently weaned? So, <laughs> I, I, we're gonna, I'm going to go too far now. Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 15. And I will give you shepherds after my own heart who will guide you with knowledge and understanding. And I will give you shepherds after my own heart, who will guide you with knowledge and understanding. That was for me. Hosea chapter four, verse six. My people are being destroyed because they don't know me. Since you priests refuse to know me, I refuse to recognize you as my priest. Since you have forgotten the laws of your God, I will forget to bless your children. Habakkuk, for as the waters fill the sea, the earth will be filled with an awareness of the glory of the Lord. Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 14. Malachi, because it's, it's some of these he wants just, I have three. Uh, Malachi, the words of a priest's lips should preserve knowledge of God. And people should go to him for instruction, for the priest is the messenger of the Lord of Heaven's army. Uh, okay, Philippines, Philippians, <laughs> Philippines, <laughs> Philippians chapter three verse eight. Yes, everything is worthless when compared with the indefinite value of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For His sake, I have discarded everything else. Counting, counting it all as garbage so that I could gain Christ. So you got to die to this world, give, turn your life over to Christ, leave this world alone. Okay, this last one, and I'm going to wrap it on up and go on. Talk to you guys. Um, Second Peter verses, chapter 1, verse 5. In view of all this, make every effort to respond to God's promises. Supplement your faith with a generous provision of moral existence. I'm not sorry, moral excellence. And moral excellence is, it's amazing how I went over the ones that I wrote the definition. Moral excellence is the quality of doing what is right and to avoid what is wrong. So what we're doing with, thank you, Jesus. We want to show and display moral excellence for Jesus Christ. And what by using our wisdom and knowledge, the knowledge is all these scriptures, everything that's given to you through the Bible, all the revelations, all the prophecies, all the good things of how to live your life, how to direct you and instruct you. Those are all the knowledge things. The wisdom is implementing those things into your everyday life because somebody somewhere is getting confused into God when you know better and you don't do better. He feel like you're foolish. So he feel like, okay, you know, I give y'all a time here on earth to get it right, to turn from your weak. And for those of you who that might not be familiar with repent, when somebody tell you to repent, it's not to do the same thing over and over again and say, Lord, forgive me. Lord, forgive me. Like some of us might curse here and there and say, Lord, forgive me. Lord, forgive me. And we're going to get that. But the goal is to try not to curse. That's the goal. Uh, the goal is whatever that we're repenting for is to try not to do it anymore, to just stop it. That's how that's true repentance with a sincere heart saying, you know what? Lord, forgive me. I'm sorry for cursing like that. I'm going to have to clean my mouth up and watch it. And when you do curse by mistake or use profanity, you should be convicted and feel bad enough to say, Lord, forgive me. You know, I'm working on it. And God should start, you should start having a pattern where when you do curse, you'll go ahead on and rebuke yourself, clean your mouth up, and you'll even try to, you know, uh, some of the cursing words you're going to start, like um, either spilling them out. Are just trying to replace them, you know, with something else. Like I used to say, 
A S S or like, not trying to say butt or bottom, you know? So, you know, it's ways of doing it where you don't have to just talk so filthy. So, you know, that's just, that's just an example. You know, um, executing your wisdom, some of you are falling into the same traps over and over and over again with the same kind of men, the same kind of the same kind of women. And you got to understand this, the wisdom, this is why God feels like you're foolish and why he wanted to talk about this because you're doing the same thing, expecting a different result. You're going over and over and over, like hitting your head, hitting your head on on like the brick wall or something. You're doing the same thing. He feel like, my children, if you hearken, listen to my voice, do as I ask you, then you won't keep making the same decisions over and over and over. You know, um, some of you are with the men, for example. You're sitting up there being led astray by the same female. You know the female only wants your money. She really don't want you. You know what I'm saying? She um only calls you when she needs something. If she don't need anything, and this is not just her, every woman that you have been with does the same thing. So when you know that women are doing you like that, then you're going to have to switch it up with the type of women that you choose. And you really should be... If you're getting in alignment with God, that I hope you are, you're, if you're not married, you're keeping your body to yourself, waiting on God, preparing yourself for Christ, and just waiting on him to send you a wife, you know, and that's just all that that is, you know, you're cleaning it up, lining it up, and pre being prepared for your wife, you know, and uh, with the women, you're going out here dressing all kind of way, you know, you want to be respected. You want to be looked at like you are worth marrying. You want to be marriage material, but you got to understand is a real man that really wants to be married is looking for a real woman, a wholesome woman, someone that he don't mind showing off, you know, someone that, you know, is like his trophy wife, you know, that's what, you know, being honest. So he's looking for someone with some virtue, some respect about herself. Not nobody that's real needy. Not nobody that's the very, very dependent. You know, he wants somebody that, um, like a Proverb 31 woman. You know, she's dressed well, sp speaks softly, not very loud, not always drunk or, you know, talking all crazy. You know, what you put out is what you get back. So therefore, wisdom would be, you know, would be acting, displaying yourself and preparing yourself as the woman that you want to be so you can be respected. You know, it would be wise of you to say, okay, you know, when I was dressing coochie-fied or dressing, you know, scandalous or like a harlot or a Jezebel, I was getting men that only wanted to Netflix and chill, uh, only wanted to take me to a hotel, never wanted to take me on a real date, uh, never wanted to do something with me, take me to family uh, gatherings, you know, take me out of town to trips, you know, you know, so it's like when I was portraying myself to be this way, I was being taken advantage of. I was being used and abused and just thrown to the side. Nobody was respecting me. So it would be wise of me to let me change what I'm putting out. Let me put out something of more value. Let me value myself. Let me cover up. I can still be sexy, but let me not make it where the the butt cheeks are actually out. The breasts are actually out. Um, It's even ways that you will wear your hair, you know, um, that God would prefer you not to wear your hair. You know, it's kind of hoochie. You know, it's not, you know, it's not, um, it's a word for it, but it's a word that I want to use, but it, it's just not in alignment with what God would want for you. You know, he wants you to look, you know, modest, you know, look, you know, have a, a respect for yourself. And once again, I'm going to read the definition of Moral excellence. We all should be performing moral excellence. And that is the quality of doing what is right and avoid what is wrong. So that's us demonstrating to God, uh, to Jesus, Father God in heaven. I know, I understand what you're telling me to do. And because I want to go to heaven, I will fall in alignment. I will use my all of the knowledge that I have from you. And I will use my wisdom to walk this thing out. Because now I know better. I know better, so I have to do better. And that's what God is. He's letting you know, like, hey, you know, I give y'all everything that y'all ask, I give. And he's asking me right now to go ahead on and pray for somebody right now for you right now. So I'm going to go ahead and pray because I try to be obedient. Father God in heaven. Lord, I just want to thank you because I know that you said anything that we ask that's in alignment with your will is already done and it's, it is a yes, not a no. 
So I thank you right now for each one of my listeners, each one of my viewers, Father God, having uh, wisdom and knowledge and understanding, Lord. Let everything that they have done, that they have went through in their life, let them learn from it and not make the same decisions over and over and over, Lord. Lord, let them seek you in everything that they're doing, all of their ways, Father God. I just ask that, Father God, right now, Lord, they have a, already have a supernatural anointing, Lord. I thank you for the supernatural anointing. And I thank you that at the sound of my voice, each person that hears me, Father God, each person that um is here with me, Lord, in spirit, Father God, that they're no longer tied into making those poor decisions and doing things as if they are foolish when they are not foolish, Lord. You are their father. You have given them so much knowledge and wisdom and understanding, Lord. And let them exercise everything that they have learned, Lord, in their everyday life, Lord. Right now that I ask you, and I thank you for doing it, Lord. I just thank you so much. You're a good God and you're worthy to be praised, Lord. We worship you. We praise you, Father God. We don't want to go to hell, Lord. We don't want to go to hell. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Yes. We don't want to go to hell. Hell is real. If you um, get a chance, it's a video about a 13-year-old girl that goes to heaven. And I saw a dude named Mac Prince, a Mac Price, Mac, M-A-C, Price, Price, or Price, or something, I believe, Price. Mac Price. And he talks about how he met Jesus. And I'm in the spirit right now thinking about it. And he's, um, he got a lot of videos. He talks about people that are in hell. Um, like uh, Kobe Bryant, he says Tupac is in hell. I actually, he, it really chilled me, and I got chills right now just thinking about some of the people that he said was in hell, you know. And um, even oh Lord, my God, and uh, he talks about uh, even Kobe Bryant's daughter Gigi being in hell, and uh, he just talks about just uh, an old lady was in hell. He said he seen an old lady with gray hair, glasses on. And she had that wear glasses because he said in hell she put she took her her glasses and put them back up on her nose and wherever they was at in a part of hell where they was at they couldn't move and said that when she moved the demon just came and just with his mouth just tore her to shreds you know you know just the idea of that you know you know and God know one thing about me that's why I don't get visions and I don't see stuff like that because. It scares me so much. Like, I, since a little girl, you can just tell me a story. You didn't have to whoop me. My mom could say, Bjorn, get your butt up in there. I'm going to tell you. And I say, okay. And I fall in line. Since a little girl. Like, so he, the, I don't have to see hell. I don't need a vision. Heaven would be nice, you know. But I don't want to be scared either. I know it wouldn't scare me. But he knows that I'm kind of, I got to believe. Like, I believe. You know, I can just believe by hearing. I believe by the Bible. So, you know, a lot of the visions I don't get now, I am dreaming more about, and I have to throw this out there, I'm dreaming a little bit more about um people, and I feel like I, it's in reference to a prophecy that I've done. So some of the people that I have seen, is some of, uh, it's, it's been like mothers. It's been mothers, and that's what they, it resembles to me. And um, I'm sorry to tell you, but it's a lot of you that may lose. If you have not lost your mom, you may lose your mom this year before this year is out. Uh you may you may lose your mom before twenty twenty one. And I said it in one of my prophecies that we were that the remnant, God chosen people, and some of people that you know, you know, a lot of people were gonna be filled with sorrow. Their hearts were gonna be filled with sorrow. And God, you know, it's sad to say, but he can only reach some of you when you're hurt. When you are in a bad situation, that's the only time you'll come to him. So if that's what it takes to get you to bow, because every knee will bow, that's what he's going to do. And uh, I really, I just want y'all to get it because, like I said, my belief, I got chills just thinking about the stories about the guy that, you know, went to hell and people that just, you know, you know, sometimes just take your time and just watch the videos that people are talking about them going to hell and what they've seen or them going to heaven and how it was. And even them mean with Jesus and how he just his own man and got his own look and he don't look like nobody. He just look like himself. He just look pure and heavenly. So thank y'all. I love you guys. Y'all be blessed. Bye bye.